Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Red Elevator. I'm Nina Takish. This is the fun, infamous Red Elevator. And today we are going to look at my new Biltons. I'm so excited to share it with you and how I styled it and how you can do the exact same thing in your home. Follow me. Welcome, welcome, bienvenue at my new bookcase. I'm so excited about this bookcase. It took forever for me to commit to making it. Like you guys, I also struggle with what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And I'm really excited about it because as you guys know, once you have a built-in, it's there to stay and you can't take it with you. So you've got to be really sure that this is something you're going to live with. And of course, pass along to whoever may purchase your home after you leave. I wanted to do a very special YouTube episode on this. I'm going to keep it concise. I'm going to keep it short, but it's going to be packed with really important information that I know you guys are going to get a great takeaway from. Why did I want to share this with you? This is not just an ordinary built-in. There are a lot of details that went into this bookcase that will be very informative that you can also use when you build your own. First and foremost, this was built by a very skilled carpenter and the door fronts were made with flat MDF. So there's nothing tricky here. You need to do a flat MDF in order to get the right finish for your cabinets. Then we applied a special molding here, which we call the Nina, because I did design the blade myself. So this is actually the Nina molding, which if you're in Los Angeles, you could certainly, you know, have this made by me, or you can certainly try and mimic it because who are we kidding here? It's not like I reinvented the wheel, but this molding, the way that it's designed, we'll get a close up of it is a specific one that I, that I really love. And I design, and there are ones that are very similar to this. What's important to note is that this molding is no more than I would say half an inch max. You don't want to go more than that. It's applied on top of the MDF and then was cut right in the middle. So these were applied after the fact. What I love about these particular cabinet fronts is that it mimics what would be a molded wall. And I wanted it to feel very natural and I didn't want to have hardware on here. We added the molding on top of the MDF, as I mentioned, and then everything was painted on site. These moldings are uh, made by a machine and they're cut linearly and then they are applied. Another great thing about this is that everything is touch latch. I love touch latch because it's easy to open, it's easy to close, and you don't have to clean the hardware that you put your dirty fingers on or other people put their dirty fingers on. So um, I love touch latch because I didn't want to have hardware. I didn't want the eye to sort of be interrupted when it was looking at the beautiful molding. The paint that we used here is the same as the wall color because I wanted it to feel more like a Parisian apartment and have it sort of melt in and not stand out as a separate built-in. The finish that we used on this piece is a lacquer finish. So essentially, if you were to buy it, this is a Benjamin Moore paint, you buy the satin finish and basically it doesn't really have a sheen to it, which I like, but it's easily cleanable and it feels very, very smooth. So you have to make sure that the painter that applies a paint for your particular bookcases does so, sands it down over and over again and makes sure that you get a very, very smooth and soft sheen finish. What we did, which was very purposeful that I really wanted to share with you, and this is where sort of those golden nuggets of information come from, is that we had a flat base. We applied the same exact baseboard that we have running throughout the family room onto this piece so that it would be flush with the wall. And again, make it look like it is part of a piece that had been here for many, many years. The height of my baseboards are seven and a quarter inch tall throughout my house. And therefore we had this cabinet built so that it had an eight inch base that didn't have anything that was just flat. And then we ran the baseboard on top of it. The way that I style this bookcase was to take a lot of my favorite books, I collect books and I have a lot of them throughout the house, but I decided to choose groupings of books that I love and to expose them from where I had them, which was in my office and bring them out into this bookcase. So I chose books that I love and what I did was that I removed all of the dust covers. Then I selected the books by color. I know a lot of you are gonna get angry and say, 
books are for reading, they're not for decorating. Yes, they are absolutely true. These are all decor books, so in a way, I'm being very purposeful with my decorative books. So I want my decorative books to not only give me information about decor and design and style for my favorite designers, but I also want them to look decorative. So it's sort of a double entente of decor, decor. But yes, books are really meant to be read. And I have, believe me, gone through every single one of these books. In fact, I had so many post-it notes in these books that I had to have a couple people help me remove the post-it notes so that when I displayed them, those post-it notes were not sticking out of the corners of the book. My all-time favorite book is this Helmut Newton book. He's a photographer, a very famous photographer, and it comes on an acrylic stand. So if you buy this, it'll be linked below in the comment section. It comes with its stand. It's, I believe, a special edition Helmut Newton. And I think having a book on a stand, whether it's this one or another one, looks great on a bookshelf so that people can actually leaf through a book that you have on a bookshelf and really enjoy it. All of the items that are on this bookcase will be linked in the comment section below in case you guys want to buy them, with the exception of the vintage pieces that I actually purchased, believe it or not, I wanna say a month ago when I was in Palm Springs, I went antique shopping and Palm Springs, California has a lot of these great old um, antique marts and I literally picked up all of these pieces, with the exception of two or three that are actually new, which will be linked below, that I purchased online. One was from Crate and Barrel, one I got from H&M, but all of the other ones are vintage and they are actually really beautiful. They have a lot of gorgeous detail and they're glazed, they're pottery, they're handmade, they're artisanal. Just go to your local flea market or even look on eBay and find glazed pieces of different shapes and different sizes and you can display them on your shelf. I placed the decorative objects in a way that made sense and had some form of symmetry and balance. So for instance, if I had a book that had a sculpture on it, next to it I would put a bowl. So you want to keep sculptures not too close to one another, you want to make it varied, and you want to put about four to five books on each section and maybe a decorative object on top of it. If I have a vase on one, then I'll put a plate on another. I decided to put a very large old antique piece here in the corner because it needed the height. And next to it, I did a very modern acrylic bookend, which is something that I actually had that I bought from an estate sale a long time ago. And then I stood up three of the books that mimicked the vase in terms of color. So for the purposes of um, tutorial and for the purposes of understanding the um, dimensions of this bookcase, my shelves that I built are three and a half inches thick. I think that is the perfect thickness. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. Um, I would have liked to have put LED light strips in here, but for some reason, I completely forgot. I don't know, this happens to me regularly where I remember things for everyone except for myself. So. Unfortunately, I forgot the LED strip. So if you can, definitely add them. The depth of the shelf itself, the tertiary shelves, the secondary shelves are nine and a half inches. The depth of the main piece, which of course was dictated by the way this room was designed, is 23 inches deep. Another great item that I think you should definitely have and invest in are these little stands. We're gonna put these in the um, comments section. And what you can do is basically you can put any standing plate. This again was an, uh, it's actually a signed piece from a local artist in Palm Springs. And I just love finding these beautiful things and enjoying them and loving them. I mean, they look so beautiful in the house. And then I just stand it in a way on top of the book so that I have height, I have color, I have texture, I have the books that I love, and this is exactly how you need to style your own bookshelves. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Red Elevator. I hope you found this information informative. I would love to hear uh, what you guys think about these types of decorative items? Do you love collecting vintage or do you wanna just buy new? Let me know, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Again, I'm gonna ask you guys to please subscribe to this channel, it really, really helps. And to give this video a thumbs up so that others get to watch it too. As a reminder, if you were not watching last week's episode, we are gonna do a Q&A 
next week. So answers to your dying questions will be answered here on the Red Elevator. So if you have questions that you need to ask me, go ahead and sound off right now in the comment section. It's not too late. We are gonna review the questions, we are gonna answer them for you, and then we are going to broadcast them. So let us know exactly what is on your mind, what questions you have, and again, thank you for joining us on this episode, and we can't wait to see you again next week.